uh, heroines or mainstream commercial actresses who are meant to be doing a certain type, stereotype of roles and stereotype of, um, you know, setup uh, in films. And I really didn't want to get defined by that. I wanted to go beyond that. I wanted to try something else because I loved parallel cinema or art cinema. I just love cinema, basically. And I wanted to work with a different kind of setup. So it, from a commercial, then parallel or realistic, realistic or whatever term you use, I wanted to reach out. Uh, to various kind of cinema and various kind of filmmaking and various kind of uh, storytelling. And uh, then I tasted the blood and I wanted to do more of that. And um, because I re reali realized the joy of acting in such movie was, the satisfaction was much more. Um, but then I had to balance being in a commercial setup as well, as because that's where people uh, at the masses level knew me and loved me. So singing around the trees was equally entertaining and interesting at the same time um, when I was doing some serious uh, movies as well. But I think a lot of the commercial success that you had, uh, those roles were also kind of redefining in a way and the subject matter as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was, uh, in that aspect, I would say I was lucky. I was lucky that good filmmakers with good subject came uh, to me. And uh, in my career, uh, I actually didn't go out of my way to want to work with someone. In fact, it has always come to me. And uh, I was lucky enough to recognize those opportunities and then take that on and uh, so I would say it, it came to me rather than me actually going and making that decision for myself. I think you know the other thing is that um, you're well known for sort of taking taking a sort of step forward and and actually sort of doing the more complex uh, and challenging roles. Yeah I think uh, I, I need to be challenged and uh, to be excited uh, about because otherwise it's the whole things becomes uh, pretty stagnant at stagnating and so I, for a growth I need to be challenged and I need to venture out in the areas uh, other areas which uh, uh, were unknown territories unknown characters and uh, to understand a part of playing and being an actor the one of the joy the many but one of the main joy of being an actor is to understand human psychology and to get to know human beings. So the variety of roles that I could play was to understand human beings and understand life through their perspective. You know, so. Um, Nandita, I would like to come to you. Uh, we were just, uh, you know, sort of saying I, the, the first film that I saw you in was Fire. Um, and that really struck a chord that, you know, that was, I think, one of the mainstream Bollywood films that addressed these issues, perhaps. I don't know if I'd call it mainstream Bollywood. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was definitely one of the, it was probably the first film that addressed it head on. So, um, could you tell us a bit about uh, how you got involved and the reaction? Well, for one, um, just to go back to 1996, I was working in an NGO after finishing my master's in social work. I had no dream, desire, ambition of being an actress at all. Um, I did a bit of street theater before that in a group called Jannatya Manch with Savdar Hashmi. Some of you might have heard of him. He was a theater activist. And I enjoyed performance like, you know, like school children do and songs and dance and all of that, but never thought of acting as a profession. Uh, I was introduced to Deepa Mehta, it's a very long drawn story, but through Gulshan Grover, just for Manisha, <laughs> sort of, she would know that's a kind of a funny re reference. He's a villain, as you know, but a lovely person in real life. So through him, I got to know of Deepa Mehta, and all he told me was, she's doing a film and it's a very bold film. I was like, okay, you know, about women, bold, it's at least worth going and meeting. 
and uh, we hit it off and I did the film because I just thought it was a very powerful subject. Um, I come from a very liberal family and yet we had never really talked about homosexuality at home even though it was very inclusive and there were a lot of people that we knew who were gays and lesbians but that was never a point of discussion. So I had understood the subject intellectually but I don't think emotionally I understood how insensitive and hypocritical a society we actually lived in where we didn't address these issues and how insensitive we were to whatever we thought was the other. And that's why Fire for me is a very significant film because my choices after that... Is there some commotion happening somewhere? No need to fight at personal, political, any level, Next time, I will tell you that you will be a hall for the DLF. DLF deserves now even a bigger auditorium. I had to show my to the to Shanti Thank you. Thank you. So, this film, um, once it came out, in fact, it, it was a landmark censored decision because they didn't cut a single shot. Even the director and all of us were actually surprised. We were almost prepared for a few cuts. But on the 13th day of the release, a sort of a right wing group decided this was not part of Indian culture and uh, that it should be censored and banned and people were literally physically asked to stop seeing it. And through that, now in retrospect, I feel in a way it was good because it forced the society to think about freedom of expression. It was almost one of the first time that people just took to the streets and said, why should you be telling us what we should watch and what we should not? Whether it's a good or a bad film, we'll decide. And you know, so the reactions were many from people who hated it. Somebody sitting next to me on a flight would say that, uh, uh, yeah, your acting was okay, very natural. Um, you're not lesbian, are you? <laughs> or, you know, or somebody would say that, uh, are you trying to make uh, all the women lesbian and just you know, as if in two hours you can become a lesbian? <laughs> By that token, there would be no LGBTQ because most of our stories are all about Raja Rani. <laughs> so it was just, I think that film was very significant because of the kind of uh, conversation it triggered about the issue itself and the larger issue of uh, what we are tolerant about, what we are no not, how compassionate or sensitive we are, how realistic we are, how honest we are. It just raised a whole gamut of questions and we are very happy that finally the law that criminalizes homosexuality, which is a very archaic law, has been repealed and now, in, at least in India, it's not, a, it's not a crime. So I want to believe that fire had a small role to play in it, in triggering that conversation and bringing it to the public domain. Yeah, moving, sort of connecting that, Manisha, you've uh, talked in the past about how uh, roles for women are often sort of just have, have been boxed in sort of the the heroine or the mother uh, and I think you've the kind of roles you've been cho choosing are trying to sort of get out of that perhaps you could talk a bit about that yeah it's actually a really sad part of my work environment is either you are the love interest or you become the mother <laughs> so um, to find uh, a role of an interesting woman and to make stories because I feel women are the most interesting creatures and and they are not only the love interest and the mother or the sister of the protagonist or the hero but actually if if we choose to tell stories about women there is a gamut of storytelling about different aspects of women and uh, so there is a certain kind of um, stereotyped uh, in the box categories that we have um, in, in, in our movies which uh, uh, to survive in that is very limiting and to survive in that is very difficult. So I do tend to get attracted uh, towards uh, a story where women are portrayed slightly differently. 
and I would want to reach out to those filmmakers who are brave enough to tell those stories. And um, and it's basically, you know, your boundaries are not uh, just limited by a certain type of storytelling. But you go out of that and... Um, so, I, I have consciously made decisions and um, following my heart and my mind and uh, my spirit uh, to... Uh, those things, but it is tough. Let's let's say out of hundred, maybe one or two or three are making such uh, stories. And you went back and did a diploma in film and had an uh, experiment of, of producing something which actually uh, had mainly a, a female yes, cast I, and char characters. Yeah, I um, I did it in in NYU. I did filmmaking course and and I did produce a movie which was. The protagonist of the film the, was two female uh, leading ladies and it was slightly different, it didn't work but in commercial sense but it did in, in many areas in, in the sense um, it was comical, uh, the protagonist, the, the leadings were the ladies who were you know telling the stories and um, I mean, I was a producer um, from a non-film uh, background and getting into all that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, people woke up and said, what kind of movies have, uh, movie have you made? But um, they took notice of the fact and, and uh, I mean, I just took a chance of that. Um, um, Nandita, I wouldn't want to sort of ask you, uh, about your interest in Manto and uh, you've, you've been asked this before probably about being a, a woman director and you know I think as women we want to be just like a director rather than a woman director uh, and so what are your thoughts on that did it, it was there a certain reason why you felt as a woman you could bring a different perspective to that yes especially after Firak I was suddenly called on these panels there were so few women I mean, less women even 10 years ago than they are probably now. So there would be these panels with a few women directors and we all had to talk about what it feels like to be a woman director. Now, there was no way that we would know what it feels like to be a male director anyway. <laughs> so, you know, so we were like, okay, this is how we feel. And all of us pretty much said that we are directors and when we are working, we are not constantly thinking we are a woman. But having said that, just as we see some films and we say, mm, this film definitely has been made by a man. I don't know if you have experienced that, but you can almost feel a sort of male gaze in the film. And a lot of the films are probably like that. And as an actress, Manisha, you might have experienced that as well. Um, just as there's a male gaze and just as we cannot generalize, but we do, and there are reasons for that, I think there's also a female gaze. And that inadvertently comes. I mean, we all are a product of multiple identities. You know, my being a woman is one of my identities. There are various other identities. It could be national identity. It could be the color of my skin. It could be, you know, which part of India I come from. It could also not just be the given identities, but the acquired identities. What I like to do and, you know, am I a veg or a non-veg, etc. But somehow the identity of a woman, I who completely keep championing this multiple identity thing, I realized that the identity of a woman is my pri has become, or for whatever reason, is my primary identity because I'm never allowed to forget it. For better or for worse reasons, I'm constantly reminded of that. I just want to be treated as a person, forget about being a director, I just want to be a person. But whether it's about, oh, you're looking nice or not looking nice, or it's too dark, you can't do this, or what you're wearing, or you've lost weight and you've put on weight. So much of it is about being the woman. And therefore, I've struggled with this. And strangely, as I was doing Manto and I was being asked the same question, and the last few years we've been talking a lot more about the fact that we need more women directors. And when we say that, and I definitely say that, I'm sure all of you would agree, if we say that, then I thought I have to own my that, that term myself. I can't say I'm just a director, but I want more women directors to be in the film. And therefore, I feel I've begun to own it and say, yes, I am a woman director. And I'm not going to shy away from that. 
So it's a kind of a nuanced thing, I would say, where I want to ideally be treated as a director, but there is no level playing field at the moment. It's very skewed. Till such times, it's fine if I'm seen as a woman director. I don't know if <laughs> that I explains. Have to, I have to say this. This is a... This is a world over thing where I think women as a director or as a technician, you don't see a woman behind the camera. I don't I don't know if there is a camera woman. There are now, thankfully. And, and, and the or, or behind a light. Exactly. You know, so it's only twenty percent of the cinema is women yeah. and not even twenty. It's much less actually. And, than and the rest is done by the male. So I think it's about time. Yes, getting into that. No, absolutely. And because of that, that's why we have to first own it up ourselves. Because we can't say we want more women behind the camera if we are saying, please do not identify me as a woman. <laughs> okay, if that is, if that, first I own it and then we say that yes, we want more and hopefully when it's more equal, then those questions will be irrelevant. Nobody will ask us then and hopefully that day will come sometime sooner than later. <laughs> Um, Manisha, you actually, in, in your book, you actually have a chapter on the male gaze. <laughs> Perhaps you could, you know, sort of, because I, I haven't, you know, the book is not out yet, uh, so I haven't read that chapter. <laughs> so perhaps, you know, we were talking a bit about it, maybe you could sort of... Basically, I have, a, the, my book is actually about, it's called Healed, and it's actually about a period of my uh, life where I was diagnosed with cancer and I how the healing process happened and but then I thought mm, it doesn't complete if I don't share with my readers uh, what is me now how do I think what do I think <coughs> what are my values um, how do I perceive life and uh, so in that context I I had many things to say but I had to choose few and one of the important one was about uh, this male gaze and constantly being judged and constantly being this thing uh, by the standards uh, of others and uh, how successful we are in our lives or how you know so everything comes from oh she's married but a marriage failed so she's a failure or she's uh, not after a successful stint in her career she's not gotten hold of a rich guy, you know, and to get married, so then it's a failure. Or of course, my cancer happened, then it's a failure. I mean, it's it's always how pretty, how, as Nandita rightly said, how pretty or how glamorous or how thin or how old or how young. It's always about uh, being valued on those terms by other people's gaze, by other, and it's mostly men, it's mostly by men's standards of what a woman should be and how it should, you know. So, uh, where is the existence of a woman's and, and, and where is, where do I stand? Uh, I'm a woman and how do I look at life? Do I see myself as a failure? Uh, and uh, who are you to tell me whether my life has been a failure or a success? You know, do I feel that? And so it's it's all I've dealt with those issues about uh, being on a constant male gaze, and we all know the fact that uh, in our movies, uh, constantly women are uh, objectified. They have to, you know, constantly. Um, you can have beauty and brain, you can have a, have things to say, at the same time you can be glamorous and beautiful. Um, um, it's, it's all that in that chapter, it's all that and more in that chapter. Uh, you know, when you're talking about the mainstream uh, and sort of being boxed in and, and having to do certain roles or this gates, uh, is that a place the, you know, and you're pushing the boundaries in that place too. Uh, is that a place where sort of that that you feel that you know that you can change the stereotypes commercially in mainstream? Because um, I know that Nandita sticks a lot to sort of 
more more of the sort of alternate or or the the independent. Uh, but I was wondering before we go to Nandita whether you could sort of tell us a bit about your thoughts on that. <coughs> that you know now actually slowly uh, with a uh, few male and female directors making uh, commercial uh, films uh, which are inclusive of women who are not uh, typical and stereotyped. And I think the boundaries are getting slightly wider and there is more inclusion of uh, such characters in the mainstream films as well. But we still have to achieve, we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. Nandita, would you like to um, sort of say something about you know your choice in in that regard? Well, my uh, journey has been very different in that sense because right from the beginning, because I didn't really see acting as a career as a profession, it also frees you in some ways, you know, because if, if you don't have an ambition, you don't know, you don't have to reach anywhere, you don't have to go to any place. So, um, and also the few films that I did, which were more mainstream for me and more alternative for the directors, like I would say, Aks or Pitta, Aks with Mr. Bachchan by Rakesh Mehra and uh, Pitta was uh, by Mahesh Mandrekar with uh, Sanjay Dutt and Jackie Shroff, which were more sort of commercial for me. It was not only how they portray women and what the kind of stories, because those stories were interesting actually. The treatment was much more commercial, but it's also extremely hierarchical. And I would also, in fact, be curious to know from you, Manisha, what, how did you navigate that? Because I found it very difficult. And was it because I came from a social work background where all your efforts are towards making things more egalitarian, more democratic, and then you go to this film setup where you are at the higher end because of being the lead actress, you are at the higher end of the hierarchy and extremely uncomfortable because everything is so stratified and you know the light boys and the spot boys and the sort of the working class so to say has different food and the actors get different food and there's, there's just in everything there's a hierarchy built in and constantly I was being told oh you won't ever become a star you know you're too friendly with people you sit anywhere you've got to behave like a star you know, and I was like, oh my God, if that's what it takes to be a star, happily I wouldn't want to. So I think in that sense, my journey was very different. And that's why from the Hindi film industry, I started branching out to what we call regional films, which is a bit derogatory, I think, because uh, the other languages in India, I think they're as Indian as Hindi is. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So, and they do tend to make very good movies. Exactly, yeah. and in fact, they, I found a greater sense of conviction in those films and greater courage to follow those convictions. They weren't, like, even in these films that I did in Hindi, where they started and where they ended were, like, two different things. You know, there was a series of compromises that happened through the making of the film, and it wasn't the film that I'd really signed up for. So, um, that's why even the South Indian languages, which are very tough, and it was a struggle, but because those stories and those directors were really wonderful, I started being part of it. And for me, films has always been more a means to an end. So um, I ended up doing actually not that many in interesting, and in a sense, there were interesting roles, but more than that, I wanted to be part of interesting stories. And I didn't see enough as an actor. And uh, therefore, I, like a lot of people said, oh, you did a lot of films that were rural stories, like village characters. But for me, they were very different. A village character in Rinalda, as Rinal Sen's film in Bengal, was very different from a village character in Kerala by, let's say, Adur Gopali Krishnan. You know, so they were for me, they were not the same. So, uh, in fact, I remember once Sham Benegal asked me to act in a film called Hari Bhari, which had Shabana as me and other actresses, and he gave me a role of this um, very religious, uh, actually quite a pain. Um, the Muslim character who's constantly doing her namaz and is always being horrible to her sister-in-law, to Shavan Azmi. <laughs> so we had quite a difference from fire where we went love. But um, so she was, you know, I, I was this very uh, irritating, like I didn't like the character at all. And she was always being very selfish and money-minded and all of that. And I asked him, I said, no, that's not me. I don't relate to that character at all. And he said, you're an actress. You're supposed to do different roles. Exactly. Don't keep sort of being your activist constantly, exactly. you know. 
And then when I did the role, in the beginning, I because I disliked her so much, I was unable to almost perform her because I was like, this is not how I would do. And slowly when I embraced her and I realized she has her own reasoning of doing what she does. And it's actually quite a funny, interesting character. And it's funnier because when the audience sees me in that character, they keep thinking this is so unlike, oh, you know, I want to believe that's what they're thinking. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's how I kind of processed it. So for me also being an actor was a, through these films was a discovery of my own self and sort of you know living with different characters but more importantly different stories. Manisha, talking about sort of different stories, uh, some of the recent uh, uh, things, roles that you've been playing are stories which, which are not black and white, don't have the sort of typical, I guess, happy ending. Um, what kind of 